Hey, bye, Thomas here. We're up in Tennessee. Been running this Cook's Cat Claw Sharpener a lot today. As you can see, I have a very large stalactite that is uh, formed on the back of this uh, plate here on this Cook's Cat Claw Sharpener. But I want to show you from the operator's position, because we you know we've shown this with Mr. Robert and everything is from my perspective, but you need to see it from the operator's position on actually how to set up this machine. And I'm going to show you a few things that I have on here. First things first, I made a cheat sheet. What I mean by a cheat sheet is right here, I have written on here, uh, if I want the blade to go that direction, then I need to move this knob right here towards me. If I want the blade to go the opposite direction that way, I want to move this knob away from me. That is very key. Once you understand the direction of that, everything else is simple. <laughs> um, that right there, so again, if you if you move it towards you, it's going to retard the blade, and the blade's going to slow down, or it's going to move backwards, if you will. And if you're going to turn it away from you, so again, away from you, that direction, it's going to advance the blade. That right there is the most important thing, because you want to make sure you're getting the face of the tooth, so the face of the tooth there, as well as all through the gullet, and then the back side of the tooth. If you're not sweeping that entire tooth, and then the front, the back, and the gullet, you're not going to get the best sharpen possible, and then your blade's going to be working a little bit harder to get through the wood, and you won't be removing that sawdust. So you need to get a full sweep. All right, so we've got the blade in there. You want to make sure she's set fully onto these two bearings right here. If you're not careful, it can set uh, between the bearing and the washer. See, there's a little washer right there. So you got to make sure that that's set in there correctly. I've got my speed down to 50%, so it's a little bit slow right now. Go and turn that on there. So that right there moves through, and if you're not getting it to advance all the way through, uh, you might need to change your throw here and everything. But for the most part, uh, that's pretty easy setup right there. Most people can get the blade to actually push around, no issue. Now, you see this portion right here? We are going to move the rod. So this rod right here is going to go into this hole. This is, the head is very heavy. Everything on the Cook's Cat Claw Sharpener is heavy. Okay, so now you see, uh, hopefully I don't get too much glare on there. So now we have the head moving up and down in conjunction with the blade moving forward. So we've done two things right so far. You always want to make sure that, you know, you bring after or before. You never want your blade to be coming down on a tooth, so always be careful. If you don't have this depth set correctly, you can come down on top of a tooth if you don't have your alignment set. Long story short, just be very careful when you're putting that down for the first time. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the blade, or the uh, stone. Okay, she's spinning at full speed right now, and all we're gonna do is we're going to lower the head down. So, so I'm gonna turn this knob lefty-loosey. I'm looking on the screen while I'm moving. So bring that knob down, and then she's gonna start making some contact somewhere. It's probably, good, yep, on the back side of the tooth. So we're making contact on the back side of the tooth, so I don't really need to adjust the up and down anymore. Okay, so again, we, we're making the blade contact on the back side of the tooth. It's not hitting the front side of the tooth. So we need to move the blade over this direction. So, I go away from me. There we go. Now we're making contact with the tooth of the face. That's a pretty good contact right there. Now we need to bring this rod right here. We need to bring it lower. So lefty loosey. Okay, we're almost very close. That right there is a full sweep of the gun. Now you can watch the arcing and sparking go across that tooth face there, or that uh, wheel there, excuse me. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mark on the blade. Got that little pencil mark on there. And then the blade's just gonna go around without really any adjustment. But what we're gonna do, because we've got the, the, the grind we want, we're gonna go ahead and speed this up. So you can't see it right now. Well, I'll move it down when you can. You got your motor controller. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and move that up to about 70%. And as you see, we've got that face 
And we got the whole gullet, and we got the back side of the tooth. She is cutting away. And if you feel it with your fingers, yeah, she's sharp. That's like really sharp. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this go around on a time lapse. Or better yet, I'm just going to fast forward this thing. I'll take some sound out of it, so hopefully it won't be too annoying. This is, this is quite, loud, quite loud right now. And I'm doing a little bit heavy grind on it. I could go a little bit less, but... Yeah, she's good. I want to make sure I'm getting that full face. And I'm definitely getting that full face. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and bring her up. And then we're gonna turn off our electric motor. We're gonna lift the saw head up, or the, <laughs> the stone head up, if you will. And then this, you want to stop it when it's on the upstroke, right there. That way it gives you room to get the actual blade off. If I did it on the downstroke, then I can't lift this, this uh, lifter arm up. So it's always important to do that on the upstroke. So right there, see, quick little trick. And then I always just press out right here, take the blade out, and then we fold it up. So let me go ahead and set this off to the side. I'll show you how I fold up the blades here, and we'll go look at what we've cut so far. All right. A lot of people will do the, the whip trick where you just whip the blade and it folds up underneath itself. I can do that, but I, I oftentimes am not wearing gloves and stuff like that. You definitely need gloves if you're gonna flip it. So if you wanna do another way to fold the blade, hopefully you can see this on the video. I step one foot on there, have one hand here, one hand here, then this hand, I'll turn to the back side, and then you're gonna make a, a twisting motion. So you wanna make a twisting motion where this thing starts to look like an infinity symbol. So you twist it, and then you keep on pulling this hand down, you rest this blade on your leg, come in through the bottom, grab it with your other hand, pull her up. There you have it. And, cool thing is is you can do that again without gloves on that hurt yourself because after sharpening that blade she is sharp that is like razor sharp and a good way to tell if your blade is sharp hopefully I can show this on the film so that that shine to the top there I know it's not in focus but if you that shine to the top means that we've done a full sweep of that gullet that's the sharpest cleanest metal on the blade currently and then we'll put a zip tie on there and add it to the stack. And here's the stack thus far that I've been uh, sharpening all afternoon. Now, unfortunately, we gotta head back to Wisconsin tomorrow. It's been a fun trip up here. We were able to get a few deer and everything. My dad needed his blade sharpened. I said, I can do that. So here we are, sharpened blades. So again, hope you thought this was uh, interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna put the time lapse in the beginning or in the end. That just shows the blade going around a whole lot. I'll probably do it at the end here. So stick around for some interesting music and you can watch the blade go around. Also watch yourself because it is a lot of sparking and arcing. So if you have seizures, uh, don't watch this video. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not making light of that. Uh, but just uh, there is a lot of sparking and arcing going on. So stay, you know, be aware of that. All right, folks. Again, I appreciate everyone watching this channel. And if you would, please like, subscribe. Uh, building the channel is kind of been like a dream of mine. It's, it is actually growing and I'm very happy with that. But uh, I want to see if I can do more with this channel. Uh, we're loving it thus far. It's been a lot of fun. And I meet so many awesome people and we get to pass on knowledge. So if you are a sharpener or a sawyer in the Tennessee, like the uh, West Tennessee or Central Tennessee, or if you're up in Wisconsin around the Green Bay, Marinette, or even Michigan area uh, on the Upper Peninsula, please let me know if you'd like me to come out there and we can shoot a video at your place, 
So I'm always looking to meet new people and see new setups. All right, folks, we'll see you around. Thanks. Mm -hmm.